men who have committed murder, men who have held up men, men who have been guilty of rape and other vainous, uh, t serious crimes, uh, do not change that crime into a good action by simply being sincere. We all know that. What about farmers? Here's one farmer. He's talking to another farmer. And he says, I wanted to harvest the watermelons, but I planted onion seed. Sincerely believing. In other words, I believe that what I was planting was um, onion seed uh, that, that was watermelon. I, I wanted to harvest a watermelon, but I planted onion seed, sincerely believing that they were watermelon seed. And so the other farmer says to him in our cartoon, well, as long as you were sincere, you will get watermelon from those onion seed. Now, I grew the first few years of my life on a farm, and I wasn't very old before I knew better than that. The Bible teaches that every seed brings forth after its kind. There's not anybody in my audience and not anybody in the whole wide world that has ever gotten watermelon from onion seed. And the sincerity of the man who planted the seed does not change it. You see, it's good to be sincere. To be a good person, you have to be sincere. You have to be a person of good conscience. But just being having good conscience, while it's necessary, is not sufficient. Let's try that with teachers. Here's a teacher and a student, and she's asked this little boy, which is the largest state in the United States? Well, of course, we know that it used to be Texas, but now, as much as we Texans hate to admit it, it's Alaska. But this little boy answers, Rhode Island is the largest state. We all know that Rhode Island is not the largest, but the smallest state. And so in our cartoon, to get the point over, we have this teacher saying, well, as long as you're sincere, your answer is acceptable. I have been a student. I've never yet had a, had a teacher who said that being sincere would change a wrong answer into a right one. I've been a teacher myself. I've been a professor in all levels of uh, college and university work. Never one time did I give a person a right answer because I thought he was a sincere student. It just doesn't work that way. Sincerity is necessary. To be a really good student, a really first class, you need to be sincere. But being sincere doesn't change wrong answers into right ones. What about preachers? Just suppose that here's the treasurer of the local congregation where this man is preaching. And he comes to him and he says, well, it just happens that I made out your check this week for $50 less than it was supposed to be. And I was sincere when I did it. And so the cartoon has the preacher saying, well, if you were sincere, then it's okay. Don't worry. I doubt that he'd want to accept that. I rather suspect that he'd either want another check for that extra $50 or having to make it out for the right amount. Or, of course, it might be that he's a loving person and he wants uh, the poor to be fed with that or some other good thing to be done with it and he may say well you were wrong about that but go ahead and let it pass as it is but what he will not do is to say that your sincerity changed that wrong check into a right one now friends I know that you agree with me on that I just know you do what about this what about in mathematics this is somewhat back to the school situation we have here the problem, 2 plus 2 equals what? Is it 5 or 4 or 6? And here we have a student saying, oh, well, as long as I'm sincere, it simply does not matter. Now, everybody knows that knows anything at all about mathematics knows that 5 is the wrong answer, 6 is the wrong answer, but 4 is the right answer. It doesn't matter how sincere you are, that doesn't make 5 or 6 the right answer. Which of you would be willing to say, well, anybody sincere than either five or six or a thousand or a hundred or whatever answer you give will be right. And so I reemphasize, of course, we must be sincere. Hypocrisy is condemned. Jesus condemned it in the strongest possible language in Matthew 23. But we can all see that just being sincere is not enough in other realms. All these different realms of farming and preaching and teaching school and being doctors and pharmacists, in none of those did we see that sincerity would change wrong answers into right answers. Now let's turn our attention to religion. Here's the Bible, the Word of God. What about the realm of religion? Is it the only exception? 
You would think so in our society. You can go around and talk about all of these other things, farmers, doctors, lawyers, pharmacists. Not one of them agrees that sincerity will change wrong answers into right answers. And yet those same people, when they come to religion, many of them, by the thousands, the multiplied millions will say, well, if he's sincere in religion, then everything is okay. We have the Bible here. It teaches what it teaches. Sincerity doesn't change what the Bible teaches into something else. The Bible teaches truth. Sincerity doesn't change truth into error and it doesn't change era into truth. Think in the Old Testament how David was sincere when he built the Ark of the Covenant to transport that Ark of the Covenant according to 2 Samuel chapter 2, verses, uh, chapter 6, verses 1 to 5. He was sincere. He no doubt wanted to do what was right. But God had given instructions as to how that uh, Ark was to be moved. It was to be, uh, there were to be staves just sticks put through the rings in the corner of that little uh, Ark of the Covenant. And it was to be carried on the shoulders of the Levites, men of a particular tribe of Israel. It was not to be moved on a cart. Now notice how sincere David is. He wanted to move it and do what was right so much that he had a new cart built in order for it to be moved. But God didn't allow that. When Uzzah put forth his hand as the oxen was dragging it along and he thought it was about to stumble. God struck him dead. That's how serious it was. That is in the Bible to help us to know that God demands sincerity, but that he also demands truth. Our sincerity must lead us to study the Bible so that we are willing to accept what it teaches. Take the case of Moses, a very sincere man, a godly man, a man who wanted to do right. He was sincere when he struck the rock, according to Numbers chapter 20, verses 3 to 11. But God had told him to speak to the rock. And so, you see, he did not obey. A sincere man, but was he pleasing to God? No, he was not. I dare say that upon the pages of this book, this Bible, there is hardly a page, probably a page opening, that you could not find at least something that would teach to you that sincerity alone will not do. Sincerity is necessary, but it won't save you. My friends, you've got to learn the truth. You've got to learn the gospel and obey it. Many of the Jews who crucified Christ were sincere. The apostle Peter said in speaking to them in the third chapter of the book of Acts, verse 17 said, I know that in ignorance you did it. You see, they did what they thought was right. The Jewish leaders had led them to the acceptance of a falsehood about Jesus Christ. Did that sincerity mean that they were not lost? No, it did not. The Apostle Peter taught them to turn again that your sins may be blotted out. In the second chapter of Acts, the same people are addressed by the, by the Apostle Peter. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God unto you by mighty works and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, even as ye yourselves know, him being delivered up by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye by the hand of lawless men did crucify and slay, whom God raised up, having loosed the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be holden of it. These people were pricked in their hearts, as Peter said in verse 36 of that second chapter of Acts. Let all the house of Israel therefore know assuredly this, that God hath made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. You see, he had said, you have crucified Jesus of Nazareth through the hands of the Roman soldiers. But he is the Son of God. He is Lord and Christ. He didn't say, now because you were sincere, because you were ignorant of what you were doing, that you weren't guilty of sin. And that's why those people, as they heard that message, were convicted of sin, just as every person today ought to be in similar circumstances. And they cried out, men and brethren, what shall we do? 